Hey guys! So today you and I are going to talk about questions. So let's get into it. So the question in question was posted on a video I made. I don't, I don't even remember it. What It's called What About Programming Interviews in the EU? And I'm assuming that I'm bragging or something like that about my uncanny ability to spot uh, people's uh, people that I call fake seniors because the person asks now you got me curious what kind of questions are those that destroy fake senior developers well that is easy that is really easy uh, so when I talk about f a fake senior I it's maybe I was emotional at the, that specific point in time but uh, fake senior is or you can call it whatever you want guys the problem with seniority is that you can't really define what the senior actually is and the only thing that I see today is that there is a need for something that most people who call themselves seniors are not so when I work with seniors who cost you have no idea how much they cost uh, in term for the company most of them are actually not there's not that much of a difference between them and a mid-level software developer I see seniors who can't adapt to a basic like a basic change in their tooling uh, I see seniors who won't actually know how to work in a DevOps environment which is fairly it's becoming fairly standard practice like they don't know how to debug a system they don't know how to do tons and tons of stuff like the only thing they are capable of doing is writing the code and as I've said to you guys before that is the that is the level a mid-level developer has to reach to just be able to write the code but the reality guys is that the in like the IT is moving and people tell me all the time oh why do they ask me to know everything and I go because the complexity of the systems that you deal with is just increasing and we can't just hire more and more people for every little tool that you don't want to learn or that you haven't taken the time to learn and that's why I've told people quite a few times that the best investment for you is to work at large scale because the larger the scale that you work at the more exposure you will get to the realities of what it means to run an IT system and it's very very rare that you will get to a, a real senior level most companies won't even if you call yourself a senior most companies that know what they're doing won't hire a quote-unquote senior who doesn't know so doesn't have the sort of experiences that they are looking for so we can throw around the term senior we're just gonna invent another term I think the term now is like principal engineer or staff engineer or like whatever like we're just gonna invent something else and senior is gonna be to become what mid-level used to be but if you ask me what type of questions that I usually ask to figure out, and this is the same questions that I ask everybody when I figure out their experience level, I, give you, I gave the person a few examples. First, in question, first question is, how do you test your code? Now you can answer that question in so many ways. And if you are a rookie programmer or someone doesn't really know anything you're going to stutter a lot and you're probably going to say something like oh yeah I, can, I do some local testing and then you know I've heard about unit testing and sometimes I write unit tests that's a beginner level answer a junior level answer or like a fake senior answer who, or someone who works at a agency and has for most of their life and actually makes mostly of static websites or something very small where unit testing or testing strategies are not necessary what a real senior would answer in that situation would be that well basically I write unit tests for that this is which if we reach a certain level of complexity but I also write integration tests if I'm working with some specific data model that I haven't tested before or if we have an like a back-end API or something like that that I'm connecting to where I need to make sure that say before the deployment or something like that that the connection is actually working uh, if it's a front-end application I might want to add visual regression testing if uh, we're working with something very very complicated we might want to look at something like BDD or end-to-end -end testing or something like that uh, it really depends on what strategy we're picking for our like our overall testing strategy because uh, ideally uh, we want to reduce the amount of like higher level testing that we're doing because 
if we put all of our testing at that level, we're going to have quite a lot of flakiness and a lot of false uh, alerts in, assuming now, of course, that we have alerts uh, for the end-to-end -end test, if we do actually would, uh, decide to go that route. And then we can look at contract testing, of course, if we have some type of APIs that need to connect to each other. It really depends on what the overall like investment in our testing strategy is. That is an example of multiple test strategies because a real senior will know that it very much depends on the project. If you're working on like a tiny little MVP or something like that, uh, there's no real need for you to do unit testing unless you have something very complicated that you're doing, like a specific function that does something super advanced. But if you have a s distributed system with tons of different microservices and things like that, it's actually very important for you to know. And in that case, it's I, I could we can expand on that because it's not just about the testing in that scenario. It's also about telemetrics and observability because you can't debug certain things in a distributed system or figure out if something is working or not working by only doing testing. The integration testing I was talking about, you can do that, but you could also say that, well, actually we want to do some canary releasing or something like that to make sure that it's working, or we might want to take a look at um, load testing things, depending on, like I said, what level do you want to put this thing in, because you, you're you going to figure out very quickly if you're a experienced software developer that you don't have time to do all of that at the same time and deliver all the features at the same time. You have to budget things and then take it in layers because if you go with the basics first and then focus on the areas that you usually have the most issues in, you will have a more efficient testing strategy than if you just do basically nothing. So that's an example of a question that is very open-ended. It's basically all experienced, uh, experience-based, and no real senior is, or sorry, fake senior is going to be able to answer that in the sort of extent that a company like you can hear whether or not they've done this stuff before or not. It's the same thing. How do you debug production code? It's another one. What tool suite do you pick for your team? Why that one? How do you set up a CI pipeline for your team? And these are just the generic ones. We can go specific as well on back end, front end, uh, what type of role they have and so forth. Because real seniors guys, they usually when they talk, they usually have a lot of experience with multiple areas of the development process and they can give you answers that are fairly in-depth. That's what I'm talking about. They have life experience, and that's the big difference between a senior and a mid-level. Usually, like the fake seniors, like they are just mid-levels that you pay a lot more because like they basically code at the same level as a mid-level software developer, but they don't also they don't have any life experience. You can't ask them to do even half the stuff that I'm talking about and that's not a real like that's not a good investment for you as a company because you're just going to pay them tons and tons of money for basically the same output you would get from a mid-level who needs help to figure out how to work in a DevOps environment or how to do anything that is more advanced than just the basic coding on a story. So what I want you to take away from this is that the quote-unquote questions that destroy fake seniors is experienced ones. Uh, you can make them as open as you want. You don't have to take the ones that I have. It's really that simple. You ask them about specific things that are relevant to the development process. That puts pressure on you because you need to know this stuff, which is why I tell people that when you're hiring software developers or seniors or things like that, you have to have people who really know their shit in that conversation because I can promise you guys that there are tons of people who speak with the authority and the confidence of a senior software developer but if you actually ask them these sorts of questions they will just give you very high level loose answers where they tell you what they know about not really what they're doing or the reasoning behind how to think about it or like what like what is their rationality between one choice or another and that's usually because they don't really know that stuff. They know that it is important to know about it, and they've heard that others know about it, but they themselves don't really know about it. And that experience is what you pay a senior for. Not necessarily that they know how to code better than everybody else, 
but because they know how to quickly resolve issues and figure out sort of get a sixth sense for what's going on what we should focus on so forth and so forth they have to be more experienced than a mid-level because otherwise as soon as something that is a little bit out of the domain knowledge of a say a mid-level they're sort of stump which is one of the things that say for example me I have to help quite a lot with when my developers who have worked for many like most of them have worked for, for at least five years when they don't really know how to debug their own framework or figure Figure out their own story. Guess who gets to help them to figure that out? And if we, if I can't help them, we're basically fucked. That's what I'm talking about. That's the thing that trips up a fake senior because they haven't actually done enough work in their own tools or their you know, at the, the, these the various companies, uh, larger scale companies, or in situations where they have to really challenge themselves. Because this experience that I'm talking about, that you can hear when you ask someone these questions. That's life experience, and you can't fake that. It doesn't matter, like, you, you will never fake it because you have to live a life where you face those challenges before you know how to answer those questions in the way that you would expect a senior to, uh, to do. And uh, if you don't hear that, that level of understanding of the different topics, it's very likely that you're dealing with someone who's just saying that they're a senior and you're going to pay them a lot, but they're probably not going to give you much output. In, like, you, you could just hire a mid-level or a junior instead. Have a great day.